Hi, my name is Keith Cooper and in this uh, video I'm going to talk about something which I feel unduly worries a lot of people when they're thinking about getting a new printer or papers or basically what they're going to do with their prints and that is print longevity. How long are your prints going to last? First of all, I really ought to say, who cares? Most people the idea, prints are just going to last. Prints for many people are just something you produce, you put on the wall, maybe you change after a while. If that's you, then worrying about print longevity really is, in, in your printer choice and ink choices, it really is perhaps something that you needn't bother with. So who does it matter with? Well, if I'm producing um, artwork that's going to go into a museum or a gallery, then I'm genuinely concerned about producing a good product. And it is a good product that I'm looking at doing because I'm going to be selling it. So if I'm selling something, I am concerned about how long the print's going to last. Now that means the classic things like choosing pigment inks and choosing papers, which may be more archival in their properties. Um, but that's for fine art printing. Now, I won't go into in this, at this juncture just what fine art actually means. It means probably whatever you want it to. It's a marketing term as much as anything. But if you're looking at that sort of market, then really, yes, potential print lifetimes do matter. But the problem is you need to put some effort into finding out what print lifetime actually means. So you need to understand the measurement conditions, how it's worked out. Have a look at something like the Wilhelm site. Now they're often quoted for their analysis of different types of inks and you will find useful information there uh, for, you know, if you're interested in ink lifetime, ink and paper print lifetimes, how long they're going to last. But just remember it's being done as a technical exercise. And why is it being done? Marketing. Epsilon Canon, whose inks I tend to look at more often in this respect, have their inks, they pay to have their inks tested by the Wilhelm Institute, amongst others. There's a, there's a place in France, I can't remember the name of them offhand, that also does some similar testing. And this involves taking a print, um, a standardized print, not just any old print, and exposing it to various high intensities of light and environmental conditions over a period of time, estimating how much the print changes, and then extrapolating that to say, well, this particular ink set has a lifetime of 120 years, 300 years, 15,000 years, or anything, whatever you like. Remember, all of these figures in general are probably much longer than any of us expect to live. So there's no real coming back in 300 years time or say 290 years time and saying, well, this print you told me would last for 300 years, uh, 290 years and it's fading a treat. Um, nobody's going to pick you up on that. So, uh, you know, you Take it with a bit of a pinch of salt, these figures. They are, the, yeah, the, the methodologies are rigorous and um, there's a lot of work put into this. Uh, people at Ardenberg, for example, is another one to have a look at. But put it in context as to what it means and even more so whether it's relevant to you. Because Epson and Canon don't pay to have their uh, ink lifetimes tested out of the goodness of their hearts. It's about profit, it's about marketing. And remember that most of what you see about print lifetimes, estimated times that prints are going to last, the vast majority of it is purely marketing. And the aim of that marketing, it's to make print lifetimes matter to you. Now, if you see it for what it is, then it's perfectly reasonable for you to assume that as long as the prints last 20 years, OK, then that's fine. I'm not particularly bothered. Um, I've always said that I give a lifetime uh, guarantee on prints and that gets shorter every day. Um, there's nothing more. If, you, if you've got problems with one of my prints in 50 years time, take it out with my estate. Um, you know, that's, that's 50 years time. It's, uh, it's unlikely to be something that concerns me, barring unforeseen technical medical developments. It just ain't going to happen. Put it in context, be realistic about it. If you are looking at a printer 
because you think, well, I ought to get something where the prints last. Remember the practical aspects of print lifetime. I said that the testing is done under fairly rigorous controlled conditions, temperature, humidity, light levels, everything like that. Those testing conditions are nowhere near what you may get in showing your prints or actually using your prints. So for example, in here, I've got these prints which were produced when I was testing a large printer recently, and they're just pinned to the wall. Um, they're not, yeah, I no idea how long they last. They're pigment inks, they were printed on the P7500, so I'm going to assume they're going to last a fair long while, but that's pinned to a wall in my office. There's a print there that's framed uh, behind glass. Now, that will last longer because remember how you mount your prints, how they're exposed to atmospheric contaminants, um, dust, ozone, ultraviolet from sunlight, that makes a big difference. The paper type itself makes a big difference. Do the papers have optical brightening agents in it? Now, there's a op OBAs or optical brightening agents are what make page papers look particularly white. And there's a big thing about all oh, OBAs are bad. If you want your, if you're producing fine art prints, you should produce them on OBA free um, papers. Well, that's good. Um, I use both. Um, if I'm selling a print to somebody who cares about uh, longevity, I mentioned museums, galleries and the likes at the start, then I'll pick an archival paper. Just what archival means? Well, that's another one of those suspiciously marketing-like um, features uh, that I don't know necessarily what it, there are definitions, certainly for museums there are, but as an example, um, there's, a, there's a print here the print I did in a, a, an article, a video recently, and this is printed on a Nova IFA 50, uh, 49. Now, IFA 49 is, shall we say, very close to Epson traditional photo paper or exhibition exhibition fiber. Um, it does have some optical brightener in it. How do I know it's got optical brightener? Well, this is a, a deep violet UV uh, laser pointer. And if I point this at a paper, and this is an over IFA 45, one I used for a black and white print recent, one I've used for years, paper I really like. There is a spot there, there's a spot like, I'm hoping that it will show up uh, in the video somewhat if I do that. You can see it's a purple spot. Yeah, it's not particularly bright. There's no OBA in that. If I take a sample of the IFA 49, which does have OBA in it, and it lights up. In fact, the light from that makes the print light up. You can see a roll of the stuff over there. Hopefully that shows as well. There's a light up. That's optical brightener. Oh, look, there's optical brightener in that in that one there. There's also optical brightener in that. They're not archival. The print I've got over there behind the P5000, um, the one of the trees in the snow, that doesn't light up. That's printed on a cotton rag archival paper. That print will probably last, who knows, 100, 200 years. I printed it a fair few years ago, uh, but using pigment inks. So the context of print longevity needs to be understood. So just thinking, oh, I really ought to get prints that last long. If it's important to you and you've still convinced yourself that it's important for some reason or other, then the choice usually is to get a pigment ink based printer. Pigment inks in general last longer. Um, there are still some pigments which are maybe more prone to fading than others, but under store, good storage, modern OEM, so that's Canon or Epson, pigment inks will last for a long while. Notice I don't give numbers here because yeah, they're based on the paper. They're going to last a long while. Dye inks are not going to last as long, but may well outlive you all. Um, I've got many a print done here on dye-based printers, there's one here. Um, I have no idea how long this will last. I would expect if it's roughly handled and used as something like this, it might show a difference in 15, 20 years. Of course, if I keep it inside one of the drawers here, one of the, bottom, one of the big print drawers here, and the, this, this table here is actually a, a map case. So the drawers in it go all the way to the back here. They are absolutely huge. I use it for storing prints amongst other things. If I stored this interwoven with, let's say, archival tissue paper, kept it in the dark, kept it out of the way, 
it might last 100 years, might last 150 years, who knows? Um, I can't remember exactly what paper it is, so there's no way I can work this out. Um, it simply doesn't matter. So what I'm really saying is that where print longevity matters to me, it's almost always a sales and marketing related aspect of printing. Do I genuinely care whether a print of mine lasts 200 years or whether it lasts 300 years? If I'm going to be honest, no, I don't, because I'm not going to be here. Now, if it does matter to you, think carefully why it matters. And if you're selling prints, make sure you sell them at a premium because they're using archival. It's marketing. It's about selling prints. Um, if you're looking at passing prints on to people, then yeah, use pigment inks, but look carefully at storage. Look at the paper. Look at what you're, how you're storing your prints, because that's going to make a big difference. You can take the best prints, go on, put them in bad storage conditions, and the papers will brown, they will have various problems. Um, if you want something that's going to last, you're likely to go for a matte paper, and it's going to be something like a cotton rag paper, and it's going to be all kinds of things. You'll, you'll read it in the marketing stuff as to why it's particularly suited to that. But as I say, in the reality of it, it doesn't really matter nearly as much as the printer companies would like you to think about. It's just a feature to sell more printers to a certain market. And if they can make you worried about print longevity, then you're going to actually take notice of the print longevity information. If you don't care about it, you'll buy a printer for other reasons. Um, so just be realistic about it. Um, someone's bound to mention third party inks. Um, I don't use third party inks. They range from reasonable to abysmal. Um, the abysmal ones, uh, you would do a print and the print will, if you, particularly if you pick a nasty cheap paper as well, and uh, the, the print could fade within weeks. It probably won't. It may be months. It might be years. You don't know. And that's the whole point. Now, it's just easier for whole sorted reasons I've mentioned why I, I use OEM inks in printers. But once again, if you don't care about that and you're just after cheapness, I did a video recently about you know, the print quality triangle. If you're buying a new printer, do you want cheap printer? Do you want cheap inks? Do you want you know, cheap papers for it? What do you want for it when you're buying something? Think about these, but always remember, there is the dead hand of marketing at work behind all of this. So think through it. Um, if you've got any questions, please do ask. I always appreciate it. It's somebody's question this morning that uh, made me think of doing this particular video. So um, ask away. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, please do tell other people about the channel. Subscribe. And um, generally, thanks for watching.